Hey everyone, little end of year bonus video for you. Just wanted to say thanks for all the views and the support this year. It's been incredible. And I want to share with you four archaeological facts, discoveries that I learned about that didn't make it into uh, any videos, but nonetheless I find well interesting. It's also an opportunity to show off this wicked sick Christmas pudding beanie that my mum knitted me for Christmas. Thanks, love you mum. Uh, let's just hop right into the trivia. The Pachamac Idol was one of the main uh, relics, icons, gods of the Incan Empire, and naturally, the conquering Spanish under Hernando Pizarro thought it was an absolute load of devil-worshipping pagan bollocks. Uh, so much so that he ordered his men to undo the vaults where the idol was and break him in front of everyone. Meh. But it turns out he was either lying about that order or his men didn't carry it out because in 1938, this idol was rediscovered. What a fantastic story. I had no idea that this Incan relic existed until I just happened to stumble upon the article. What is doubly more interesting is that this year, in 2020, archaeologists were able to more accurately date the idol, and it turns out it was from the 8th or 9th century CE, which is about 700 years before the arrival of the Spanish, and a good 400 years before the founding of the Incan Empire. So this god already had a life for several centuries before the founding of the empire, and it really must have been very special to them, and they must have gone to a lot of lengths to preserve this icon and, and keep it pride of place in their temples. What is slightly less dramatic is that the red staining on the icon, which the Spanish believed to be blood and devil worship, blah de blah uh, turns out to have been a red paint, a pigment made from cinnabar, which is slightly less dramatic than being covered in blood. That's just the way archaeology goes sometimes. The rediscovery of an Incan god, how could that be anything other than, well, interesting? It's well known that the Celts were into headhunting. If you were a lonely Greek or Roman merchant, if you were a rival enemy, anything you did to fall foul of them, your head was liable for a chopping. No two ways about it. We have lots of archaeological and historical evidence for it. And in a couple of uh, sources, these Greek authors describe the Celts as preserving heads in resin. It turns out that these sources seemingly are not lying. Archaeologists and scientists analyzed uh, skulls from Lecalia Le Ca Le Le in France. And from the lipid residue on these bones, apparently, it does suggest that these were covered in resin. How well interesting is that? It's interesting to imagine these sort of shiny orangey heads being displayed on the, in a Celtic chieftain's house or, or dangling from their horses, which is, is what they were apparently doing as well. Hollywood, if you're watching, Jurassic Park, whatever number you're on now, seven, I think, maybe, just maybe you could use a preserved Celtic head in resin and reincarnate some Celtic warriors to fight the dinosaurs. I'm just throwing that idea out into the universe. Maybe it'll get made. I'm perfectly happy to give it to you for a mere 5% of the box office revenue. Maybe I should make that. Hollywood, don't listen. I'm going to make that. Nevertheless, preserved Celtic heads, that's well interesting in anyone's book. I don't care what you say. Otzi, the 5,000, 5,500 ish year old Iceman, was so well preserved that apparently we can uh, get a look at the contents of his stomach. It turns out his last meal consisted of wheat, which is no surprise considering he's a, a Neolithic, Chalcolithic kind of guy. Red deer, ibex, and ferns, uh, which can be eaten. I do think they have to go through some processing, but, but you can eat a fern. We don't know if he actually was, or if he just used the ferns to wrap his meat, but that's well interesting to imagine him sitting there, eating his meats and wheats and bread, presumably, and maybe a little bit of fernage too. It seems that he was really into really fatty cuts of meat, which is not a huge surprise, because that's where a lot of the energy is, and, and these people couldn't exactly pop down to the shop whenever they needed more food, and he was, you know, climbing a mountain. Um, but he probably had too much of a taste for the fatty cuts of meat because it seems that he had a big-time heart disease 
is the medical term, and was probably not in the best of shape. Obviously, as it would turn out, that wouldn't be a problem for him because he was shot in the back with an arrow. But yeah, Ertzi, last meal. How can you say that's not well interesting? Last one, breastfeeding Australopiths. So if you watch my channel, if you're familiar with archaeology and, and science of anthropology and all of these things, you know we can get an idea of, of diet from studying bones and teeth. And some scientists did that to some Australopithecus remains from Sturkfontein in South Africa, which dates around 2 million years ago-ish. And it seems like these Australopiths were breastfeeding for about a year, which is uh, pretty typical for modern humans as well. I know all about that now. I'm a dad. I know everything there is to know about children, and I can tell you that that's can be typical. What is even more interesting is that the, the bands in this teeth apparently suggest that they could have possibly returned to breastfeeding throughout their childhood when times were tough, which is allegedly similar to orangutans. Apparently orangutans can return to breastfeeding for their children even up to as much as eight or nine years old, which is really old. And the Australopithecines may have been doing something similar. It's hard to say for sure, but they may have been doing something similar. And I think that's well interesting. I think that's cool to imagine some Australopiths going through a hard time. Food is scarce in their, in their neighborhood for whatever reason. Maybe there's a little bit of drought. And the mum returns to breastfeeding her children to keep them going. Just keep them going till the rains return, till the animals return. That's well interesting. That's well interesting to imagine that. Anyway, thanks for watching my videos this year. Thanks for subscribing. Big thanks to my Patreons for all the support this year. It's, uh, it's incredible. It really is. I'm very lucky to have this channel to be able to talk about well interesting archaeological stuff. Um, it's fantastic. I got lots of big plans for 2021. Take it easy. Goodbye.